Okay, for this fly, we're going to tie a foam grasshopper pattern. This is a pattern that I like to fish with. Uh, pretty effective, pretty light, good, nice lifelike appearance to it, and really a pretty easy tie. So here we go, a little foam grasshopper pattern. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, um, uh, yarn, a little bit of, uh, this is actually uh, egg yarn that you can use to tie egg patterns, but I prefer to use, like to use it for the body of this fly. So I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to use black thread today, sometimes I'll use a lighter colored thread, yellow, a tan, but black today. For one, because it's easier to see when you're watching this on a video. Get my thread back to the back of the hook, and I'll get my uh, get my yarn tied in here on the back. Wrap it forward just to get that body. Okay. All right. Now the next step is I'm going to get some uh, some tan foam and I've cut this tan foam you can see it's about a quarter inch wide here and this is five millimeter foam so pretty thick stuff really and I'm going to take this tan foam I'm going to tie it in sticking back a little bit over the back of the hook first wrap soft till I get all the way around then I'll pull pretty hard I like to use a pretty heavy heavy uh, thread for this so that you can really cinch that foam down. Sometimes it has a tendency to want to slip around the hook unless you get it fastened down nice and tight. The great thing about foam though is you can always kind of work with it like this and get it, position it right where you want it. Okay, so I've got my foam tied in. Now I'm going to grab my, uh, my yarn here. And we're going to wrap this yarn. Well, actually, I'm going to wrap my thread forward. Then we're going to wrap this yarn right up the shank of the hook. This gives the underbody of this fly a little contrast in color. You can use any color you want. Um, I prefer lighter colors when I'm doing hopper patterns. It just depends on what uh, what the fish prefer and the waters that you like to fish. Okay, once I get that yarn tied off, whoop! There we go. Now I'm going to pull this foam forward and we'll tie that off. Same thing, wrap it relatively soft around the foam, take it all the way around and then I like to pull. Let's fasten that, fasten that foam down nice and tight. There we go. Okay, I'm going to snip the foam just like that. Okay, now the next step is we're going to tie in some, uh, some elk hair. So I've just got a little patch of elk hair here. We're going to tie in our elk hair on the back. Get a good little pinch of it. Pretty good pinch of elk hair there, and a lot of times what you want to do is when you when you cut that, you'll notice there's some pretty fuzzy stuff in there. Just kind of want to take that, hold the tips of the elk hair, pull out a lot of that fuzzy stuff. A lot of the fluffier elk hair you're not going to want. You want those nice stronger fibers. And once you get that, then I'm going to have to put it in the hair stacker.
Okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to tie that elk hair in right about the same length as the fly. So it'll be a, just a, maybe a touch longer, but about the same length as what the foam is on the fly. Same sort of thing. I'm going to make a fairly loose wrap on my first one. And then once I get all the way around, then I'm going to pull. And you'll know you're doing it right if that elk hair starts to flare. You see it flare in there. It really flares when you tie it onto foam because it has to sink down into that gap. And we'll get some good tight wraps around it. Okay, that looks good. And now we're going to snip the front end. I like to get down nice and low. Okay, now the next step is I'm going to take some more foam, same thing, tan foam, except this is only three millimeter foam, a little bit thinner than the other stuff. And I'm just going to cut myself a little bit of a, a little bit of a strip here. little smaller strip and I take this strip and I'm going to use my needle nose scissors here and I'm going to punch a little hole right through the center of this thing best way for me to show you is probably the back end you'll see I punched a hole right through the center just like that and I'm going to take that and I'm going to slip that right over the eyelet of this fly and turn it turn it so that the flaps are top and bottom of the fly and then we're going to try to tie that down just like that whoop lost it for a second Now sometimes people, sometimes I get the question, why did you put the extra piece of foam on the front when you didn't need it? And part of it is because when I put this little extra head on, it allows the fly to cast better because it gives it a little better aerodynamics as it travels through the air. That's one of the reasons that really helps. I've got my foam on the bottom trying to creep up on me. The other reason is it provides a little bit of a collar on that elk hair and helps kind of tame it down a little bit. Sometimes that elk hair can really get out of control and be flaring up on you really good. This kind of tames it down a little bit, so I like the look of the fly. Okay, now my last step is I'm going to tie in a uh, some rubber legs here. I've got these... Uh, yellow and black striped rubber legs. Cut myself a strip. Take two of them and they're about an inch, inch and a half long. And what I like to do is I'm going to tie them in right there where I tied the head of the fly in and loosely give it three loose wraps. Okay, now I can grab this side and this side, and I can pull them to the side so that they're on the side of the fly. Now that they're on the side of the fly, now it's time to give it, to give it some tighter wraps to fasten those things. And, and sometimes those rubber legs, they'll want to really crawl around on you if you don't tie in the right spot. So you've got to be careful to make sure to tighten it in the exact same wraps that you had prior. Okay, now that's the kind of the end of the fly. So we're going to whip finish it, and we got a little bit of trimming and fixing to do. So 
All right, put the whip finisher on there. And I whip finish right over the same spot. You get a lot of thread buildup in this one spot, but uh, if, you're, if the black doesn't appeal to you because you can see that black, then you can always tie with a uh, different color, uh, yellow or a tan. Or in the past, what I've done is I'll take dubbing and I'll just put a little dubbing on here that's the same color as the foam that I'm using and then just dub it in there. So, okay, now that I've got that. Okay, a couple things to do here. On the back of this fly, I like to shape the back end a little bit. So, I'm going to take the fly out of the vise. And as you can see right now, it's got a blocky type of back. I'm going to cut that so that it's more of a taper. So I have it cut here. And I'll let you take a look. There now, see if that fly has a little bit of a taper. The other thing I'm going to do is this, you know, I do, I like to wrap that, that extra head of foam around the front to get that collar that's up here on the top. But I don't like having it down there on the bottom, so I'm just going to snip that right up to where the thread is. And there it is. Nice little foam hopper. So that fly is great in July and August. Floats well. The legs keep it righted. And uh, actually, if you tune into a couple of videos to another, uh, another YouTube uh, channel called Phelps on the Fly, he'll be fishing with some of these here. Uh, coming up and uh, maybe check out his channel Phelps on the fly and uh, he'll be fishing with some of these flies from dry flies and timber balls